Good evening. Good evening. I want to welcome all of you to the Lord's house tonight. This is a unique worship service. We're going to, the intent was not to have a rehearsal for this. And the reason for that is because our students and youth are simply going to tell the story of Luke 1 and 2 and then Matthew 1. Now, I think when we went through this earlier, it was probably good we went through it once so they know where to sit, but this story is one that we often don't hear the whole thing. I think often we just hear Luke chapter 2 and we skip 1 and we skip Matthew chapter 2. So you're going to hear some little bit different parts of the Christmas story that often don't get shared. And so I hope you'll listen real carefully as they read right out of the Bible. Everything they're going to read is scripture tonight. And in my devotions earlier today, I was reminded often Christmas is about me. But it's really about Jesus. And so as we hear these words, don't think of it as, oh, it has to be absolutely perfect, but instead that Jesus came for us just as we are. That's the reason I didn't want a rehearsal, because then we realize this is what God gives to us as we are, not when we're polished or perfect. Actually, they did really well, so. But kind of keep that in mind tonight as you, and you're gonna participate in this as well. So no entertainment purpose, no. When it says congregation, yell that out, sing that out. That's the way it's meant to be. So afterwards, after we're done, we'll let you take a picture of the nativity as they've all got dressed up and at the very end of the service, um, if you'd like to do that. But in the meantime, just enjoy it. Remember, we're gonna do that at the end. So we'll have that. But Pastor Freudenberg's got some announcements of things coming up um, this year and coming year as well. Yes, uh, just a reminder of our Bible studies that are happening. December 26th and January 2nd at 9 a.m. Uh, one week from tonight, we'll have our regular Wednesday service at 7 p.m. And January 5th and 9th, we'll be back to our normal schedule. Uh, as you can see in your bulletin, we have a new uh, challenge that is coming up in the month of January. A few years back, we did the Red Letter Challenge. Uh, by Zach Zender talking about uh, all the books, all the words in the Bible that are often in red letters, those words of Jesus, focusing on those words. This year, uh, we are doing the Being Challenge. What does it mean to simply be a Christian, to receive the love God has for us, and then live that out in our lives? So uh, there is a book that will coincide with that sermon series. You can find that book in our library. That's normally a $20 book. You can buy that for $10 because of some thriving choice dollars uh, that are offsetting that purchase. So you can see more uh, of the schedule for that on the back of our insert this evening. Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Come thou branch of Jesse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read our opening versicles as written on the screen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name, O Most High to herald your love in the morning, your, your truth, truth at, at the, the close, close of the day. day. This time you may be seated as our WNAC kids will now present their Christmas program. In the time of Herod, Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who believed 
belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because he, Elizabeth, was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the customs of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. The angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people to Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit of the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabrielle. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home after his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found a favor with God. You will conceive the, and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be a great and will be called the Son of, of Most High. The Lord will give him a throne of his father, and he will reign over J Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Over, overshadow you. So the Holy One, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word will, will for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among the women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? That the woman, that the mother of the Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in the womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. I'd like to invite all of you to sing Mary's song. After she said that, now she writes this beautiful song, and we don't know what it sounded like, but we're going to sing one version of it tonight together.
My soul rejoices, my spirit voices, sing the greatness of the Lord. For God my Savior has shown me favor, sing the greatness of the Lord. With praise and blessing, join in confessing, God who is solely mighty and holy. Oh, sing the greatness of God the Lord. His mercy surely shall rest securely on all who fear him, love and revere him. Oh, sing the greatness of God the Lord. His arm now bearing, his strength declaring, sing the greatness of the Lord. The proud he scatters, their rule he shatters, sing the greatness of the Lord. Oppression halted, the meek exalted, full are the hungry, empty the wealthy. Oh, sing the greatness of God the Lord. Here is the token, all that was spoken to Abram's offspring, God is fulfilling. Oh, sing the greatness of God the Lord. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. There is no one among your relatives who is that name? Be ready. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote... His name is John. His name is John. His name is John. Immediately... His mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What, what is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, and now we're going to sing... Zechariah, the song he wrote to describe all this event. So let's sing this as a congregation together. Sing praise to the God of Israel. Sing praise for his visitation. Redeeming his people from their sin, accomplishing their salvation. Upraising a mighty horn within the house of his servant David. God spoke by the prophets long ago, his promise on oath recalling. To Abraham made in former years of vanishing foes appalling, that those he delivered from their fears might gladly and truly serve him. You, child, will go on before the Lord as prophet on a preparing. 
to speak of the faith of God most high, his counsel of truth declaring. Rich mercy and grace for all, whereby iniquity is forgiven. Oops. O bright rising sun, now shine on us in need of illumination. Come scatter the shades of sin and death, and shatter their domination. Be guiding our footsteps on their path of peace in your presence. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This is the first census to take place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who he was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While, were, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Okay, I'd like the uh, pre-K through second grade, if you can come up here. You can come stand up here, and we're going to sing the first verse of Away in the Manger, and then we'll invite everybody to join in on stanzas two and three. Come right on up. Yep. Now let's have the rest of WNAC. Stand up. Let's sing loud. <laughs> the cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus uh, down from the sky and stay by my You can join with us, need to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with thee there. Okay, you guys can go sit down once again. Thanks for coming up. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace. And on earth, peace to those on whom his slave or west. Okay, let's get everybody to sing together. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo, shepherds why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Let the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song. Gloria in excelsis Deo. may be seated we're got a little scene change going on when the angels had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go to bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the lord has told us about so they hurried off and found mary and joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger when they had seen him they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who wait and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they'd been told. An hour passed. Okay, now we sing with the, the shepherds, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Guys, let's stand up. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds mark their watching, nor silent flocks by night. Behold, they left the heavens, they're shown a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, 
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, Judea. Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked where where is one who has been born uh, born king of the Jews. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people, chiefs, priests, and teachers of law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In, Be in Bethlehem in Judah, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out that found out from them the exact time the star had hap had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, "Go and search carefully for the child." As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And coming to the house, they saw the children with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down at all worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and pres presented him in gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they have gone and angels of the Lord appeared to Josh, Joseph. Joseph in a dream, get up, he said, take the children and his mother and escape Egypt. Stay till I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child who killed him. I'm going to now sing the hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. This is congregation and response to what we've just seen. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus Lord to thee we raise, manifested by the star. From afar, Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm. Have worked it salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known. And he revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Burst into 
Doublet song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and sword of Singing with trumpets and the blast of ram's horn. <coughs> Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let us see around resound and everything in it. Make music to the Lord with the harp. Let the river cl the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness. And the people with equity. equity. Okay, you guys go, go bow down up there. Yeah, good job, all of you, sharing the story today of Jesus' birth. I think on that first Christmas, it may not have been this crowded, but you can see what Jesus has done. We're all here worshiping the King. Now, you can turn around for a second. I want to share just a little devotion with you. When you think of Christmas, what do you think of? You think of presents? Yeah, spending time with family, what else? Okay, God? Eating food, birthday? Giving. You think of Jesus. And getting. Oh, that, at least they're honest. Yeah. You know, as I was lit, putting together my list, I had some things like baking cookies, making music, Okay, or maybe turning on the radio and listening to Mariah Carey, Patricia Underwood, Michael Bublé, Blake Shelton, Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby, Elvis Presley, and of course, Mannheim Steamroller. Did I list enough of them? I got a verse today. I told you at the start of the service that I read a, a devotion today that changed what I was going to say tonight. You know what this verse said? It's one of the best verses for Christmas that I've ever read. It says this, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name be the glory. Do you know what that's talking about? That was written for a holiday that they celebrated a long time ago in the Bible. You know what holiday it was? It wasn't Christmas. It was the holiday Passover. So if you were a kid back then, they might do something like what we're doing right now, except they'll reenact the Passover. They would hide some yeast, and the kids would go find it in the house. They would, somebody, the parents would probably roast a lamb, and they would have bitter herbs, and they would read from the Bible. And this psalm, they would read ahead of the celebration, kind of like we're doing tonight. Before we celebrate Christmas, you would read, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name be the glory. That way, we don't forget what Christmas or Passover is really about. 
What is Passover about? Any of you remember? I'll tell you what it's about. It's about how God rescued his people out of Egypt. It's about how God did 10 plagues. It's about how God said that if you put blood of a lamb on a doorpost, he will save his people. It's about how God would kill all those that didn't put the blood on the doorpost. It's about how God, he saved those people and brought them in out of Egypt. And it's about how God split the Red Sea and they walked through on dry ground. It's about how God killed the entire Egyptian army. It's about how God allowed them to have sandals that didn't wear out for 40 years and how God made it so their houses would last. It's about how God brought them into the promised land. So what about Christmas? Is Christmas really about presents and Nat King Cole and Mannheim Steamroller? It's about spending time with your family and Jesus' birthday. Is, is it really about your family? It's, it's about Jesus' birthday. Yeah, I agree. But what did God do? You guys just told the story of what God did. God came to Mary and Elizabeth and Zachariah and Joseph. God, what did he do? He made it so that the government made Jesus born in Bethlehem. Otherwise, he would have been born in Nazareth. God made it so angels came to the shepherds and God put that star so that the wise men would come and be there. It's about how God did all these things. And you're right. You know who it's for? It's for you and your family and for me and my family and all people so that we die. So, so sometimes we get so busy in the music and the baking and all that stuff that we forget what Christmas is really about. So let me say that verse again. Not unto us. O oh Lord, not unto us, but to your name be the glory. Thank God that Christmas isn't about us, but it's about him. But is it really not about us? It's about us because he came for us. And he died for us and he rose for us. You see, it's not about us what he did until he did it. And then it's completely about us. So I'm glad you're here tonight and you were able to tell his story. Because it's an amazing story. Amen. Okay, I'm going to let Pastor Freudenberg uh, continue with, with our prayer. And you guys can join with us in that as well. I want you to stand as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. All right, guys, let's stand and let's face Christ, our Savior. We can face him as we say these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we have time to consider our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Those can be placed in the back of our sanctuary this evening. Can also be given online at calvaryleads.com. Continue with the prayers of the church. All right, everybody, I want you to fold your hands together. As we pray, we're going to say a few prayers, of course, that will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this Christmas that you have claimed us as your own that it is really not about us but about you but that we are included in your greater story we thank you for the children that are here tonight who have presented this story 
uh, to us. And we pray that as you have given them this gift of faith, that you would continue to nurture this faith in them their whole life long. We pray for those who have requested our prayers tonight, especially Abby, Clint, Brody, Devin, Barry, Pastor Rob, and for all others we name in our hearts now. Show your mercy to them, Lord, and heal them of all their ills of mind, body, and spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of baptism, that by our baptism you have included us in your greater story. We celebrate with Joseph, Jessa, Liz, Rowan, Cheryl, Belle, Olivia, Joseph, Dwayne, Josie, Jennifer, Violet, Junior, Edelyn, Noah, Dale, and Richard at their baptismal anniversaries this week. And we pray that you would remind them this week and every week of the gifts you give in baptism. Finally, Lord, taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, guys, I want you to look at that screen or the monitor as we're going to say these prayers together. And we speak together. Visit, Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love, love of, of your, your only Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray together Luther's evening prayer. I, I thank you, you, my Heavenly Father, Father through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. So before we sing our closing hymn, you guys are going to stay tight. I know you've been there for a long time, especially if you're Mary or Zechariah or the angel. You feel like you've been up there forever, but just stay there after the closing hymn ends so we can go ahead and get some pictures. And the congregation may remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, hymn 387. Joy to the world. Oh, you guys come up too. Come on up. Right up. To the world the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. Right up here. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love 
Well, let's give glory to God for their sharing tonight.